We're finally well into season 13 of the wildly popular Blue Bloods, and for a cast that's been together so long and been through so much, they sure have a lot of stories to tell. And we can tell you one thing, some of these are really wholesome. In today's video, we're looking at some of the sweetest things the cast has to say about each other, plus some other cast facts you might not know. First up, this relationship is more than just on screen. Thank you again for this beautiful necklace. Yeah, you did good. Pop. Bridget Moynihan is one of the most iconic actresses ever, and one of her most iconic roles happens to be as Erin on Blue Bloods. She's been playing the role for well over a decade, and she's definitely made it her own at this point. Her on-screen daughter is played by Sammy Gale, known for her roles in Candy Jar and Vampire Academy. When she finally landed her role on the CBS series, she bonded with Bridget immediately. You got the hookup from your CEO. <laughs> I'll be living in one of the economically challenged neighborhoods I'm helping. And now she's got some great stuff to say about her. After years of sharing scenes together, Sammy says Bridget is like an additional mother to her, which is as sweet as any relationship can get. She also said the older actress had taught her how to be a gracious, kind, talented, and independent woman. There's no higher compliment you can pay a co-worker, and it's clear that she's had a huge influence on Sammy these past 13 seasons, since she's also said she's made her a better actor. I don't know about this. <laughs> this is just... I'm sure you know what you're doing. What's more, Sammy actually said her favorite part of doing scenes with Bridget is how they're universal mother-daughter situations. Since she gets to act out her character dealing with them, she's actually learned how to handle situations with her real mom and be better prepared for future ones. It can't be any clearer, this is definitely every girl's dream role and Sammy's making sure everyone knows it. Plus, this isn't the only thing Sammy's learned from playing Nikki. She asked about our family. Did she talk about hers? It's rare that a character is so well written that an actor learns from them, but that's definitely the case with Nikki Reagan Boyle. She may have learned plenty from her on-screen mom, but she's actually gained some smarts from her own character as well. When talking about the show, she said Nikki has impacted her a lot over the years, and she's been able to mature alongside her. When a younger actor like Sammy plays the same character for so long, it makes sense that they grow up together, and apparently only good things have come out of that. According to Sammy, Nikki helped her learn to speak her truth, and she's also also given her the courage to stand up for herself both personally and professionally. If you've been watching the show for a while, you'll know Nikki is never afraid to speak up no matter what's happening. This is exactly why fans were so upset when she eventually ended up leaving the show. Her last appearance was in the season 11 episode Atonement, and even that was nothing more than a guest role. On the show, they wrote her off as having taken a job in San Francisco, but in real life, the young actress just wanted to branch out and try something new. After all, if you'd been playing the same role for around a decade, wouldn't you also want to check out other stuff? But the great news for us fans is that the absence might not last that long. Next up, we might just have a confirmed comeback. She's posting job offers? What's it say? Molotov cocktail experience a plus? That's not what she's about. You could have fooled me. Nikki was a super important part of the Reagan family, and things haven't really been the same without her. While it's true the show is a police procedural, it also focuses heavily on the inner workings of the Reagan family, from Commissioner Frank Reagan to his daughter Erin Reagan to her daughter Nikki. We can't forget the tons of other Reagans that popped up throughout the show, Danny and and James, both Frank's kids, and both in the NYPD, and then a younger generation through Nikki and her cousins. While the family was pretty huge, we could always count on them to show up for Sunday night dinner together. But when there was a place left empty by Nikki in season 10, fans started wondering if we'd ever see her again. We've had plenty going on since her sudden disappearance, so it could be an even bigger shock to see her back. Understanding, you know, what it takes to fulfill um, our own interests rather than those set forth. While Sammy didn't officially confirm that she was leaving with an announcement or anything, she did openly talk about how she needed to try new things, and in the world of acting, that basically means the old character is done for good. But there's still hope for all the fans out there since showrunner Kevin Way dropped a tiny hint that we might just see happen soon. When talking about Nikki, he added, hopefully she'll swing by, which just means we all have to stay tuned to season 13 to see if that surprise appearance ever happens. Next, let's talk about where we've seen this character before. My range as an actor, um, a character that was someone I also wanted to see on screen. Nobody really remembers a character that only shows up for two episodes, but that's not the case with Captain Derek Elwood. He was one of the biggest villains on the show, starting with almost getting Daniel put behind bars when he wasn't even guilty. It might be a police show trope to have a villain be in charge of a big department, but Elwood still did his best. Thankfully, he was caught in season three, where we found out he was only framing Danny to cover up 
up his gambling problem. But why does he look so familiar to so many fans? It's because he's played by Nestor Serrano, who's had a glittering career in movies and TV for over four decades now. Today we're breaking down his biggest roles and soon you'll know exactly where you remember him from. Serrano was trained at the Lee Strasberg Institute starting his career in the 80s, so he's been around a while. His big break was the 1986 movie The Money Pit, where he worked alongside stars like Tom Hanks and Shelley Long. He played Julio in the movie and then his career started taking off. He still took some small TV roles, but his next big project came in 1989 when he played Detective Eddie Esteban in Lethal Weapon 2. The Buddy Cop movie sequel was already hyped enough, and when fans saw him in the opening scenes alongside Mel Gibson, he was pretty much a confirmed star. What's more, he's really good at cop roles. Ultimately, it becomes about what this miraculous event, which was the, the, the Belmont race. Blue Bloods is definitely not Serrano's first shot at playing a police officer. After his round on Lethal Weapon 2, he went on to play a bunch of roles as a cop. You might remember some of them. In 1989, he played Gino Tofanelli on True Blue, an NBC crime show that only lasted about 12 episodes before it was canceled. The CBS show The Hat Squad had a similar fate, though it got to 13 episodes before it was shot down by the studio. Serrano had a main role in this show, playing Raphael, one of the three cops the show focused on. Next, he moved to another CBS show called Maloney with a supporting role as Lieutenant Matty Navarro. Again, the show ran for one season before ending, and after that, the actor did small roles in The Commish, New York Undercover, and Promised Land. Later on, he took his talents to the big screen, appearing as Detective Sanchez in the iconic film Bad Boys, before putting in an appearance as Eddie Santos in City Hall. While he only had a minor role in the movie starring Al Pacino, Joan Cusack, and Bridget Fonda, his death at the start got the whole plot running. He turned back to smaller TV roles after this appearing in Criminal Minds, CSI, Bosch, Cold Case, Law & Order, the SVU version, Trial by Jury, and Criminal Intent. That's a lot of appearances as a cop, so if you remember him from somewhere, you've probably watched these iconic shows. Finally, here are his other big roles. I haven't been um, typecast, uh, except, you know, I'm the bad guy a lot of the times. Sure, he's had a lot of cop roles, but he's also had a lot of other great roles otherwise. In 1999, he had a supporting role in none other than a Martin Scorsese film called Bring out the dead. While it wasn't appreciated at the time, it's since become iconic, starring other big names like Nicolas Cage, Patricia Arquette, Ving Rhames, and John Goodman. Most 90s babies will remember the 2004 thriller The Day After Tomorrow. What you might not remember is Serrano's role as Tom Gomez, one of the administrators at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. He spends the movie tracking disastrous weather patterns, and we all know how the rest goes. Right after that, he took on the role of Navi Raz in the hit show 24, who was a member of a terrorist cell being hunted down by Keith for Sutherland's Jack Bauer. Lastly, he made an appearance in the last two episodes of Season 7 of Dexter. His character, Hector Estrada, was mentioned many times over the course of the season, but only physically showed up at the end. And one of the biggest plot twists ever, it turned out Estrada was behind the death of Dexter's mom. That's a wrap for this video. Have you been keeping up with Season 13? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and we'll see you in the next one. It's Saturday in May. I'm not sure what the date is. What are you going to do after? Partying. What? Nikki's phone. Listen, stay calm. Use her name as much as possible. Make her a person to you. Got it.